Hey, Tiffany, can we unmute the choir mic? Is it good now? Thank you. Are you going to start it? So what's first? Tell me I'm a problem. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Valonia United Methodist Church. We are a church dedicated to loving our community as we are through words, actions, and presence. I'm Sarah French. I am not Pastor Chad. Um, I'm the <laughs> music director here. That was my son. <laughs> Today is United Women in Faith Sunday. We welcome you to worship as you are, as you were, and as you will be. We have a few announcements to get through this morning. Uh, first off, the Youth Valentine Center, you may have seen it come through the announcements slides. It's tonight at five. Um, if you have questions or if you still need to pay for your tickets, you can see Andrea Stitt. Please be sure to bring extra cash because we will have tip jars at the tables and we will be tipping the youth. This is a big fundraiser for them, so work hard. My son says, I want money. I work hard. <laughs> okay. Um, please mark your calendars for Ash Wednesday. That's uh, on February 14th. Church Family Life will provide a pancake supper at 6 p.m. And then the worship service will begin at 6.30 on Wednesday, February 14th. And now let us begin with an opening prayer. God of hope, we come to you in the midst of a world fraught with troubles. Although the darkness is powerful, open our eyes, Lord, to the light of your presence. Give us faith to stand against the voices of division and violence. Through your spirit, remake us into hope-filled disciples, discovering lives attuned to your wonder and sparking in others a desire to know you more. 
In the name of the one who comes to us, we pray. Amen. Now for this first song, this is Standing on the Promises. And we're going to start off sitting, but as soon as the candles are lit and the acolyte has watched me, I'm going to ask you guys to stand. So you can be standing on the promises by the end of the song. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Christians by our love, and the words are going to be on the screen. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity will one day be restored and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, we will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.
Christians by our love, by our love, cause they'll know we are Christians by our love. You may be seated. If the children would come forward, we've got a special message for you this morning. today. <laughs> I don't know either. It is kind of rainy out though. Did you have a good week this week at school? Yeah? Good. Well, I think we're going to be talking about Ephesians today. So hang on a minute. That's better. Okay, so Ephesians talks about salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, I got a question now. Can you get into heaven just by being good and working hard? No, that's right, good. How can you get into heaven? Do you know? When you, well, yeah, mm hmm. Yes, yes. But there's an. There's another way. You know, sometimes we don't always go to heaven. How do we get into heaven instead of the bad place? Being good, yes. Well, we'll go on and talk about that. Uh, there is nothing stingy about God. He willingly shares with us his abundant spiritual and often material blessings. He wants us to learn from his model of generosity as he shares of his immeasurable riches so should we gracefully share with others did you catch that share with others how can we do that anybody know how to share with others how do you share with others yeah mm -hmm. and actually at home you can share by making your bed and taking out the garbage. And if you've got friends that are walking to school by themselves, you can walk with them. And if they're having problems in with schoolwork, and if you know the schoolwork, you can help them with that. There is a lot of ways to do that. If someone's hungry and you've got an extra bit of food, you can share with them. Some of us need to do that, don't we? So... Um, there's a moral to this, and it's that we should have peace, faith, righteousness, truth, the word of God, and knowledge of our salvation with us wherever we go. So basically, we can't get into heaven by just doing good stuff. We have to believe in Jesus, and we have to go with his mercy that he could get us into heaven, but nothing we can do can get us there by ourselves. It's his, it's his grace that gets us there, right? Yeah. We just got to love God and love Jesus and be as good as we can and trust him. So here's a prayer from Ephesians, and I want you all to repeat after me, okay? Give me eyes to see the needs of others. Give me a heart that feels for others. Give me hands to serve others by walking boldly, joyfully with you to bless their lives with the good works you have created me to do. Okay, thank you guys for coming. You can go back to your seats now. Okay, 
please stand and join me in singing Be Thou My Vision. That's number 451 if you're using your hymnal. United Women in Faith is a community of women who seek to connect and nurture women through Christian spiritual formation, leadership development, creative fellowship, and education so that they can inspire, influence, and impact local and global communities. God, you gather your believers to seek and follow your will. United Women in Faith is a powerful, fearless force driven by God's love and united in sisterhood. God, you call of us to you as a community, loving and encouraging one another. United Women in Faith is focused on women, children, and youth, and acts for justice and transforms communities. God, you plead for us to engage with our sisters and brothers around the world, seeking justice and peace. Let us celebrate the mission of the United Women in Faith and the mission of our global church. May we take this mission beyond our church walls and into the community where we are called to be disciples and good neighbors. Our scripture reading for today comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 22. Christ is our peace. He made both Jews and Gentiles into one group. With his body, he broke down the barrier of hatred that divided us. He canceled the detailed rules of the law so that he could create one new person out of two groups making peace. He reconciled them both as one body to God by the cross, which ended the hostility to God. When he came, he announced the good news of peace to you who were far away from God and to those who were near. We both have access to the Father through Christ by one spirit. So now you are no longer strangers and aliens 
Rather, you are fellow citizens with God's people, and you belong to God's household. As God's household, you are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. The whole building is joined together in him and in grows up into a temple that is dedicated to the Lord. Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. May the Lord add God's blessing to the reading and hearing of Scripture. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Bobby McDaniel. Bobby is originally from Georgia. She graduated from the University of North Georgia with a bachelor's degree in management and a minor in mathematics. She is currently Director of Development at Camp Aldersgate, where she works to build relationships with our community and to raise funds for nonprofit programs. And shout out to Maddie Jenkins for volunteering at Camp Aldersgate. Bobby's passion for nonprofit work is deeply rooted in her volunteer community involvement. She is a past board member of the Arkansas Food Bank, Women and Children First, the Arkansas Repertory Theater, and the Arkansas Children's Hospital Auxiliary, where she served as its president. Among other awards and recognitions, in 2010, Bobby was honored with the Domestic Peace Award from the Arkansas Coalition Against Domestic Violence and was recognized with the Arkansas Patron of the Year Award from the Argenta Community Theater in 2013. Bobby has lived in Arkansas for over 25 years. She resides in Little Rock with her husband, Dustin, and their corgi, Lizzie. Bobby and Dustin have three almost grown children. Their son, CJ, will graduate with a Master's in Divinity from Harvard University in May. Daughter, Emma Grace, is a recent graduate of the University of Arkansas with a degree in Marketing and Finance. And daughter, Lexi, will graduate from Oklahoma City University in May with a degree in Criminal Justice. We appreciate Bobby being here to help us celebrate United Women in Faith Sunday. Please help me welcome her. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to have the opportunity to get to share with you um, more information about Camp Aldersgate and our programming. I know a number of you are already familiar with what we do. Um, but I'm going to give you a little brief history along with um, kind of an update of our programs and also how to get more involved at Camp Aldersgate if you are interested in that or called to do that. Again, thank you United Women in Faith for calling on me and Donna, I loved getting your phone call to ask me to, to do this today. Um, so. Part of Camp Aldersgate and our motto is actually uh, breaking barriers and building bridges. And that's what we're trying to do for our campers and their families. Um, a history for Camp Aldersgate, again, some of you may already know, um, but we were actually founded in 1947. And it was actually a group of United Methodist women that were part of the Little Rock Council um, that founded the land and um, it was originally a 100-acre turkey farm. Um, we were actually at that time out in the country for Little Rock, but Little Rock grew up around us. So we still have that 100 acres, um, but we are now kind of in the heart of Little Rock. We are right across from um, Baptist Hospital, and um, we are surrounded by 430 and Shackleford Road. Um, but again, when you come onto our campus, you still feel like you're in an oasis. Um, again, the ground was founded and Camp Aldersgate was founded to be an interracial fellowship for church meetings, um, also to be utilized for a variety of program for youth and for seniors. Um, then basically, um, we also, for interracial fellowship at that time, it was controversial. Um, but the United Methodist women kind of kept charging on. Um, and during the unrest in Little Rock, there is actually documentation of shots being fired on campus because we tried to be a neutral meeting ground. And also um, our 
lake dam was dynamited. Um, but again, um, the United Methodist women had their calling for the land and for to serve the community, and that's what they did. And then in 1971, Dr. Kelsey Keplinger um, was a physician in Little Rock, and he saw the need for his patients. He was an asthma doctor, and as an asthma doctor, he saw that the children he was serving didn't get the chance to go to summer camp. And he knew about Camp Aldersgate, was actually involved in Camp Aldersgate prior to that. And so he came to camp and said, I would like to actually rent camp for a week, bring 12 of my patients and my staff to take care of them, and provide a camp experience. And so that's what he did. And it was so successful that that's how we evolved to what we are today was through his beginning vision. Um, he helped form MedCamps Arkansas, Inc. MedCamps, Inc. is still our medical advisory board. As our medical advisory board, they help um, our nursing staff um, gauge what patients need, our campers need while they are on camp, and they also provide a physician on call for all of our camps for free. Um, all of our physicians are there because they are called to be there. Next slide, please. Um, and so our mission, um, our mission has evolved through the years and currently our mission is to create life-changing experiences for individuals with special needs and we also do medical diagnoses. Next slide. Our ultimate vision is to inspire a barrier free future for our campers and their families. Our core values um, and, you know, hearing your mission of your church this morning um, completely filters into that. Love and acceptance is one of our lead core values. We want um, those that we serve when they are on our campus and when they leave to feel loved and accepted by their community. Also inclusion, you know, it's one thing to um, actually someone to take part in an activity, but to actually feel that they are completely included and heard um, is a lead for us. Collaboration, we are always looking for ways to collaborate with our community, whether it be churches, other organizations, corporations, um, to cl collaborate to make it to where we can do more. Excellence, we're always striving for excellence, of course, because we want um, the community and the individuals we serve um, to be able to provide to the best of our ability the greatest thing that we can provide to them. And innovation, we're always looking for new ways to innovate and um, whether it be through accessible equipment or whether it actually be through um, new programming. And speaking of our programming, um, we have three types of programming. A lot of people, you, you hear Camp Aldersgate and you think summer camp. We do have summer camp. Summer camp is the cornerstone of what we offer. We offer eight full weeks of summer camp every year. Um, in those eight weeks, I'll talk a little bit later about the actual camps that we have during that time. Um, but we serve ages from 6 to 35 um, through our summer camps. In addition to that, that year-round piece, we offer weekend camps. And our weekend camps are, we offer at least one weekend camp a month. Um, for individuals to sign up for, and those are some of our same summer campers, plus additional, um, and it, it also serves as a respite for our camper families. So it's an activity for the camper, but it's respite time for the families. And then also we offer specialty camps. And with specialty camps, what those are is part of that collaboration. Um, so an example of that would be um, we have a camp called Camp Sunshine. Camp Sunshine is done in collaboration with the burn unit at Children's Hospital along with um, the Firefighters Association. And they bring um, burn survivors 
they fund that camp, and then we offer the programming that goes along with that. So we are very busy year-round, and we feel very blessed to be offering all of those services. Um, accessibility activities. So I talked about that we want our campers to feel like they have the true summer camp experience. Um, our kids get to zip line. They get to shoot a bow and arrow. They get to um, enjoy, enjoy pool party. And we have a full pool that has a beachfront so that whether a child can walk into the pool or actually if they need assistance, we can actually utilize wheelchairs to roll them into the pool, but they all get to experience that time. We also offer, we have a lake, which I talked about, but we offer fishing and canoeing as well. So each of these activities, we have either assistance equipment or other accessibility um, options that to where we make sure every camper that wants to participate in any of these activities can. Um, so again, we're offering the same camp, uh, the same activities that you would see at any other summer camp. And then with that, we have, I'm going to talk about our specific campers in a minute, but I want to talk a moment about our service opportunities. So through our service opportunities, I said we have 100 acres. We actually have 26 buildings on campus. Um, and so with that, Obviously, there are all sorts of service opportunities. So whether it be a Sunday school class or a church, um, we have flower beds that can be taken care of all the way through painting. And then also because we are in the middle of a Little Rock, we do have trash issues, especially in our lake and around our lake. And so even cleanup days is, um, is an amazing way to give back to our campus. And then you've already talked about that we have a um, counselor that is in our midst, a counselor, a volunteer. Um, and you can go ahead and go to the next slide. We have a program for youth that's our counselor and training program. So if you have children, if you have grandchildren, if you have nieces or nephews, um, ages 15 and up can apply for our counselor and training program. And that program, actually, um, they will receive training. And I've talked about our campers. A lot of times at our camps, our campers need one-to-one. -one. So they need someone with them all the time. And so to do that, that's part of how we meet that need is through our counselor and training program. So they are a buddy and an assistant to them while they're there. And so they will receive training on how to do that. And um, if they come in and they volunteer for a full week of summer camp, it's 125 community service hours. And if they volunteer on a weekend, it's 42 community service hours. And I will tell you, if you ever get a chance to come on camp, we also offer tours. And especially in the summer when you not only see the campers' faces and how they light up and the activities they're doing, but when you also see these amazing youth that are doing our counselor and training program, and I'm about to talk about our counselor program, but to see the service that, and the service hearts that are there um, helping our amazing campers. Next slide. Um, and then our counselor program. So this is ages 17 and up. This is actually our paid program. So um, a youth can start in as a counselor in training, and then it gives them a great segue to become a counselor um, for us. And I will say, too, though, you do not have to be a counselor in training to become a counselor. So if you do know of someone that's college age, um, we would love to visit with them. We have applications and all that online. And um, it's really in a, a great growing experience. They also leave with first aid CPR certified training. They can opt to become a lifeguard. Um, and so there are additional things that they're able to walk away with in addition to the amazing service that they're providing. Next slide. One of our counselors this year, um, he said that getting to know and form relationships with these campers has really changed me in such a positive way and made me appreciate so much that life has to offer. 
And we hear that time and time again of how our counselors are being fed as much as they are um, feeding those that they're working with. Next slide. And so let's talk about our beautiful campers. Um, and that's what we're there for. Um, so our weeks of summer camp are divided um, to a certain degree. Four of our weeks are actually named weeks. So we actually have muscular dystrophy. We have spina bifida camp, which has actually been expanded as well to spinal disorders. So it could be those with a spinal injury and beyond. Um, diabetes camp, diabetes camp in particular, and talking about innovation, this year the whole endocrinology team from Children's Hospital came out. They were able to add this year something called Camp Views, which mean, meant that the nursing staff could actually have iPads and see sugar levels as they are happening. And as those chains started going lower or started going higher, they could go find that camper and intervene um, before there was a, any kind of major issue. Um, and so those are the things that we are looking for and doing. Uh, we have a cardiac arthritis, kidney, blood disorder. We call it CACBO to add all those in. And then um, the additional weeks that we have are called CODA camp. And CODA camp is where you'll find um, our most range of ability level. And that includes our autism, um, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and other developmental delays or ADHD. And at the CODA camp, they can also bring a friend or a sibling with them as well. And so it's a great time even for a sibling um, that has that has the opportunity to connect with other siblings that may be dealing with some of the same household issues too and could be an amazing bonding time. And a lot of our weekend, most of our weekend camps kind of fall into that coda as well. So we have multiple diagnoses in our weekend camps. Next slide, please. Um, oh, and one thing I will add back to that too is this summer, we're going to have our first young adult camp. So we're going to have a camp specifically for age 18 to 35 because we have found the need that we have had those age out of our program and um, they miss camp. We have, they have Facebook messaged our staff um, and so we're trying to now meet that need. So we are actually, we've actually added young adult weekends and a full week of young adult camp for that age range. Kind of our summer numbers, just to give you an idea of um, those that we were able to serve in 2023. Um, talking about those youth volunteers, we had 99 youth volunteers to help make um, our summer happen. They served over 12,000 hours. And again, this is just in our summer camp, not counting weekends throughout the year. We had 271 campers over the summer. A hundred of those were brand new, but the rest were returning campers. And I've already said we had eight weeks of summer camp. In 2023, too, I can tell you a lot of people think of us as a central Arkansas uh, nonprofit, but we actually had campers from uh, 41 counties and seven states around us. So it's a much bigger regional um, impact as well. Next slide, please. A camper parent, I'm so glad my son was able to attend. He usually is excluded from things with his peers, but he finally found a place he is received and included. He's already talking about when he gets old enough to be a camp counselor. Thanks for all you do, Camp Aldersgate. And, um, you know, it's amazing, too. We have seen, uh, we have one young lady that's now a camping supervisor. She's there all summer supervising all the counselors. Um, and she started out as a 10-year-old in our diabetes camp. And then once she aged out, she became a volunteer and then a counselor. Go ahead. Um, key partners. I talked about our different collaborations and our partners. Um, but we have the Med Camps Arkansas, our also Arkansas Children's Hospital. I didn't talk about we have a health care center on our campus because obviously the needs of our campers um, are different than your typical summer camp. So we have two nurses that are on part-time staff 
that work for Children's Hospital. They go to Children's Hospital and ask for volunteers every year for summer because those nurses come onto our campus and actually stay 24-7 through the week. The nurses take a week of PTO starting out, but when they return back to Children's Hospital, Children's gives them that PTO back. So basically, Children's is providing our nursing staff for us, which is a huge gift for sure. Next slide. Um, also, we couldn't do it. Yes, we do charge program fees to our families, but it's on a tiered system. It's on an income level, and so they are paying what they can pay, um, as well as we have scholarships for also some of those special moments um, when even that tiered system, um, they may have more medical bills than they can pay or some situation like that. So we try to make it to where campers can come to camp regardless of the situation. But to do that, um, we work through a number of grants um, to help fund as well as we need our donors. And so, and our collaborations with companies and organizations. And then we do have a couple of special events. Um, and we have our Alders Gate After Dark, which is coming up in April. If you want to come down to Little Rock, it's our more adult-focused event in the evening. Um, both of our events are on campus so that we can showcase what we have on campus. Um, our majorly fun, family-friendly event is our fish fry in October. And that's when our whole campus is open on a Sunday afternoon. And of course, we have amazing fried fish, but we have activities for um, all the kiddos as well, all across campus, so that they're seeing the activities that we get to do. And, um, but, um, so, and our churches, I mean, our churches, your Sunday school classes, United in Women in Faith are um, key to us being able to provide the services that we provide for our families. And then basically in closing, I just again appreciate the opportunity. You can find more information on our website. Um, you can look at what uh, camps that we have coming up. And if you have questions, please reach out. And also if you know of any counselors in training or counselors, um, send them our way. And they can also apply through the website too. I'm gonna be here after the service. I am more than happy to answer more questions. And again, just appreciate the opportunity to tell you more about Camp Aldersgate and um, what we do. And we just appreciate all of you. Your church is very generous to us. So thank you. And thank you again, Donna, for calling me. Let us affirm our faith as it is written in the Old and New Testaments. Please stand, if able, and join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Uh, first, I'd like to start um, and go over the prayer concerns and our joys. The uh, prayers for the Kilborn family, as Lynn Kilborn's mother has been recovering from a stroke and a heart attack. Anthony and Megan Simmons are grieving. Jerry C. 
Steve Fritz, Taylor Townsend's father-in-law, is doing better but has a long road of recovery after a car accident. Marcella Jackson, the Wallace's great-grandson, has RSV and is in the hospital. He's three weeks, three weeks old. Brandy Mullins, friend of Debbie Townsend's, uh, is doing a medical mission in Guatemala. Our joy for today is congratulations to Charles Coker on his retirement. And we'll say our prayer, please. Lord of Lords, creator of all things. Well, I backed up. I'm sorry. I apologize. At this time, you are invited into a time of silent prayer. You can pray in your seat or by kneeling at the altar rail. Lord of Lords, creator of all things, God of all things, God over all gods, God of sun and rain, you created the earth with a thought and us with your breath. Lord, we brought in the harvest, the rain watered the earth, the sun drew cassava and corn out of the clay. Your mercy showered blessing after blessing over our country. Creeks grew into rivers, swamps became lakes. Healthy, fat cows graze on the green sea of the savannah. The rain smoothed out the clay walls. The mosquitoes perished in the high waters. Lord, the yam is fat like meat. The cassava melts on the tongue. Oranges burst in their peels, dazzling and bright. Lord, nature gives thanks. Your creatures give thanks. Your praise raises, rises in us like the great river. Lord of Lords, Creator, Provider, we thank you. All things come from you, O God, and with gratitude we return to you what is yours. You created all that is, and with love formed us in your image. When our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so, in gratitude for all of your gifts, we offer you ourselves and all we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We are so glad to have all of you here with us today as we celebrate United Women in Faith Sunday. Thanks to each of you, we were able to raise funds last August at the Bargains Galore Rummage Sale. Those funds helped us to give globally and locally in needy areas. Locally, we gave donations to Camp Aldersgate, Harbor Home, UMCOR, Conway Cradle Care, and the Prison Fellowship Angel Tree Program. We also sent donations to the Amboy, McElroy, and Wynn United Methodist Churches here in Arkansas after they were hit by tornadoes last May. We purchased and donated a book to each get kindergarten student in the Bologna School District. We purchased Christmas gifts for a family that needed some extra help. And we took gifts to several of the Bologna School District high school, junior high, and middle school clubs and athletic teams throughout the year. Thank you all again for all of your support this year which allows us to give to others. Your giving to Valonia United Methodist Church also helps to support the missions and ministries of this church. The Blessing Box, Youth Activities, Summer Reading Programs, and all the other activities are because of the generosity of this congregation. You can give by placing something in the plate in just a moment or make an online gift at BolognaUMC.org. Also, if you would like to make a donation to Camp Aldersgate, please just donate that on the bottom of your check. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting the ministries of our church. Will the ushers come forward, please? Please stand for the doxology. you'll remain standing for our final song we're going to sing my lighthouse
this benediction go forth into the world in peace be of good courage hold fast that which is good strengthen the faint hearted support the weak help the afflicted honor everyone love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. My lighthouse, my lighthouse. Die hard, Willie. I like Merle too, though. <laughs>